Welcome to Rebuilding a Vintage Open Steam Launch. This is part 16 and it's about fitting a new safety valve and quick setting of micrometers. I've just removed the old safety valve from the boiler and I'm going to take it apart so you can see what's inside it. In the last episode when I did the first steam test on the boiler I wasn't happy with the safety valve. It was taking far too long from blowing off to snapping shut. So here are the internal parts of the safety valve and there's nothing really wrong with this safety valve other than it doesn't work properly. And also the adjusting ring is a little bit on the loose side. So here are a few alternatives. This is a Stuart valve as fitted to 504 boilers. This is the original safety valve which I think is unserviceable. And this is a small safety valve. It's a commercial item. It's got the right thread but it's a little bit small. And the other one down at the bottom, this one I'm playing with, is called an express safety valve because it's the type of safety valve fitted to express steam locomotives. But it's a little bit short and it's the wrong thread, it's quarter by 40. This is a Jubilee fitting safety valve. Really well made, just the right size, not too long, not too short. The only problem is the thread is wrong. This one is 3 8 by 32 and I need it to be 5 16 by 32. But this is easily modified. I'll start by taking it apart. The design of this type of safety valve has always impressed me. It's just such a clever simple idea. It has an external locking ring so you can lock the centre part in position once you have the setting. And here are the components. Like everything from Jubilee fittings this is beautifully made. And these fittings are made in a place called Altofts in West Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. Jubilee fittings have been around for many years and really know how to make fittings. This gadget is called a micrometer and it's for measuring things. It's for measuring external diameters of pieces of metal bar. This is a digital micrometer and for me it is a very rare occurrence to see it working because I never have a battery for it. I generally use my old micrometer that I've had for years which is not battery powered, it's a manual one. What's clever about this micrometer is that it will measure in thousandths of an inch and also in metric. I tend to use imperial measurement most of the time, so I will use the thou setting. And that's really because I is well old in it and I was taught in imperial when I was at school. Plus of course a lot of the drawings that I already have for steam locomotives and steam engines are all in imperial measurements. What I'm doing at the moment is measuring the diameter of various twist drill shanks. This one's a quarter of an inch. This one is five sixteenths. And the diameter of the shank of this twist drill is three eighths of an inch. You end up with a very jumbly set of numbers, so metric is probably easier. But I use this micrometer most of the time. And very conveniently, this micrometer has all the sizes that I will ever need engraved on the side of it. I freely admit that I am not very good at maths. My penultimate school report said out of his depth and sinking and the final one just said further critical comment would be futile. Thankfully though I was okay with words and I was pretty good at the arts, music in fact, that's why I became a musician. I have to explain it this way so you will understand where I'm coming from. I often do things in an unorthodox manner, in particular where precision engineering is concerned, but the mechanical things that I make work and they work very well and I always use a drill shank to set my micrometer. Here once again I'm using the quarter of an inch diameter drill shank. If you look on the micrometer you will see that it's about a thou under size and this is quite close. Then all I have to do is just turn the end of the micrometer to the correct measurement and it's the same with the five sixteenths of an inch twist drill shank. I put the twist drill into the micrometer and presume it to be approximately one thou low and then I just adjust the micrometer. I can hear the experts saying well why not just adjust the micrometer vernier to the correct number but it takes longer doing it that way it's quicker to get as close as possible with the drill shank and then just adjust backwards. Anything that speeds up the job is okay by me. I once read a quote and the quote said one of the most important things in life is time because it's something that we're all running out of. And it's very true. So I don't really have the time to wind out the vernier very, very carefully to exactly the right point. It's much easier to just use a drill shank to start you off and then back off a thou. 
and that's also why I use adjustable spanners. That way I don't have to rummage through drawers, constantly looking for different spanner sizes. Anything that saves some time is a good thing. So it's over now to the smaller of my two lathes, my little boxford, and the safety valve is held in the three jaw chuck by the hexagonal part. Because I'm going to be threading this part using a die held in a tailstock die holder, it's better to hold the part by the hexagon, because the shape will stop the part rotating when the thread is being cut. At the moment you can see me frequently using the micrometer, just on the end part. What I do not ever do is turn the part all the way down and then check whether it's right because if it's wrong, the part is scrap. So I'll always use a little bit at the end and test it with the micrometer, then if that's a little bit undersized, at least the rest of it won't be. Obviously the engineering way of doing this is to micrometer the part when you're getting somewhere near to the finished size and then look at the vernier and calculate how many more thousandths of an inch you need to remove from the work. And if I was a good engineer, I would probably do that. But what I do is leave the micrometer set to precisely the diameter that I require, and I keep trying it on the end of the work. And by the way the micrometer actually feels on the end of the work, that tells me when I'm getting very near to the finished size. I tend to do as many things as possible by feel rather than mechanical skill, and it's worked for me over many years, and I'm not just talking about in the engineering department. The way I play music, I do it very much by feel. In this clip I'm using my old tailstock die holder to cut a 5 16ths by 32 threads per inch on the end of the safety valve. As you can clearly see in this clip, I'm using the manual method to cut the thread. I'm holding the chuck with my left hand, and I'm rotating the tailstock die holder with my right hand. I'm doing it very slowly and very smoothly. Being very careful not to impale myself on the cutting tool that's sticking out of the tool post. That's in the right hand side of the picture. And out of shot at the front of the tool post is also a parting tool, and I should have removed that too. In actual fact, the camera angle makes it look like my hand's far too close to the cutting tool, but it isn't. So once the thread is cut, I will verify the thread by using a union nut. This is a 5 16 by 32 union nut, a little bit worn, but it tells me that the thread is okay. Before removing this part from the chuck, I'm going to use a paintbrush just to remove any chippings from it. So now I have a safety valve with a 5 16 by 32 thread on the end of it, which matches the thread in the boiler. Now it's time to reassemble the safety valve, including the locking ring. I'm initially setting the safety valve to blow off at a low pressure because for the purposes of the video I want to show me adjusting it on the boiler. In reality I could get this very very close and then test it with compressed air and I'll go through the motions of showing you how I do that anyway. To do a quick test on this valve I could use a piece of silicone rubber at each end, one from the compressor and one to the valve, but instead I'm fitting it to the proper compressor part. And as you can see here, it soon blows. This is not blown into very high pressure. It's quite low, it's about 30 psi. That will do for starters. I will make the accurate adjustment to the working pressure once the safety valve is installed in the boiler and the boiler's in steam. So with the copper washer in place and a little bit of Loctite 542, it's now time to fit the safety valve to the boiler. The hexagon part of this safety valve is very close to the copper part. Very close indeed, but it goes in okay, and it's nice and tight. But I have to confess that I did reduce the diameter of the locking ring in the lathe, because it was just too tight against the vertical copper part of the top cap of the boiler. If you look at this image on screen at the moment, you will see that as I tightened the safety valve into the bush, the top part of the safety valve and the locking ring, which is pressing against the copper, started to unscrew. In the next episode I will be raising steam in the boiler, adjusting the safety valve and giving the steam engine a test run. I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year and thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.